2023 fait partie de ces grosses promesses prévues pour début 2013, sur lesquelles on ne cesse de nous teaser depuis maintenant plusieurs mois. On savait déjà que techniquement, Crytek, le studio en charge du développement, n'avait plus vraiment besoin de faire ses preuves, les crises sortis jusqu'à maintenant étant de véritables démonstrations visuelles. Crytek n'hésite d'ailleurs pas à rappeler qu'on ne trouvera jamais plus abouti techniquement que Crysis 3 sur les consoles actuelles, allant même jusqu'à narguer les Halo et autres Gears of War. Pourtant, la série ne donne pas systématiquement dans l'excellence, à l'image de Crysis 2 qui souffrait d'une IA, d'un scénario et d'un mode multi loin d'être irréprochable. Des points sur lesquels l'équipe semble avoir particulièrement bossé pour ce nouveau volet. Et c'est à l'occasion du dernier Paris Games Week que nous avons pu poser nos questions à Mike Reed, le producteur du jeu, notamment concernant les milestones atteintes depuis le dernier E3. Just to recap, at E3, uh, we showed a small slice of one of our maps called Canyon, which was called Dam Busters. Uh, we're still actually showing that demo around now. Uh, we're going to have a new slice ready relatively soon. Uh, since then, we actually, at Gamescom, we uh, launched the multiplayer. And the multiplayer side, we included uh, two modes we showcased, which was our brand new Hunter mode and uh, Crash site as well. And so here again, we're, we've brought our, we wanted to bring the multiplayer out to a new consumer group, and Paris Games Week was one of our targets for that. Le mode multijoueur mis en avant ces derniers temps se pointe effectivement avec quelques modifications qui découlent directement des feedbacks de la communauté concernant les épisodes précédents. Parmi les huit modes présents dans le jeu, on trouvera bien évidemment du deathmatch classique ou en équipe, mais aussi le mode crash site, issu du deuxième volet et basé sur un principe de King of the Hill, ou encore le mode hunter, qui oppose deux chasseurs furtifs à un groupe d'intervention du sel. We have the, uh, the multiplayer experience side as well, and we've really gone back and we've we really analyzed what we did right in Crisis 2 and uh, what we did wrong in Crisis 2 and kind of got a lot of feedback from, from the player base and with the help of some external agencies, really come back and uh, providing, a, providing a very rich experience in Crisis 3. And some people won't think that, you know, simple things like having the armor and the cloak there are such big elements to the game, especially when you've been, especially when people have been bred to play FPS games in a very certain way. Okay, I've got my gun, I jumped down in the pit, now let's fight. And you can't really do that with these guys. So now it's kind of like retraining people and, and coming back and going, okay, how are we going? How can we get people to kind of latch on to these elements? It makes things a little bit more difficult at times, but I think in the multiplayer elements, it kind of comes back to, um, in the multiplayer elements, it comes back to, you know, how can we make that experience, you know, easier, but at the same time, keeping that level of, uh, of difficulty in there. And I think we have a good balance between them. L'arc semble faire un retour en force dans les jeux ces derniers temps. Il n'y a qu'à voir le nombre de grosses productions déjà sorties ou à venir proposant cette arme, comme les Assassin's 3, Far Cry 3 ou encore Tomb Raider. Une arme à la mode donc, qu'on retrouve parmi d'autres dans Crisis 3. Well, of course, the bow. I mean, I think everybody knows that that's really something that we've changed in there. And some people are like, well, that doesn't really fit in. It's like, you know, this is a futuristic thing. And then it's like, we had this whole hunter theme and we wanted to bring, come back to that. And, you know, with profit and hunter and being back in the jungle again, something that kind of throws back and offers a unique experience. There's some other new weapons in there, such as the Typhoon. There's a bunch of new alien weapons as well. Some new, some new attachments that people are going to enjoy as too. Malgré son setup intéressant qui fait revenir sur le devant de la scène Prophète, le personnage du premier épisode, le tout dans des environnements originaux qui mêlent béton et ambiance tropicale, sa volonté d'apporter de la fraîcheur au mode multi et son aspect technique qu'on imagine puissant, Crysis 3 reste un FPS parmi beaucoup d'autres. On peut alors se demander ce qui, d'après les développeurs, le différencie vraiment du reste. I get this question a lot where some people want to come back and say, well, you know, how about you do something completely different? And I mean, if we were to really take Crysis, rip it down completely and build it from the ground up, it wouldn't be Crisis anymore, it would be something else. So what we wanted to do, and Crisis was already intended to, as it was originally intended to be a trilogy, at least this part of the story. So basically what we did, and we wanted to finish this off, and we wanted to finish it off with a bang, and take what we learned from Crisis 1 and Crisis 2 and combine those elements in Crisis 3. So I think that we found a very good middle ground in Crisis 3 between what we, the great things we did in 1 and 2, in having those very open environments uh, from Crisis 1, and then also, um, you know, some of the keeping people on a path, but it's still at the same time having action sequences that are very open and really open to, you know, however you want to approach them rather than going, okay, 
I'm gonna run up to this corner and there's a guy over there and I'm gonna shoot him. And everybody has that same kind of experience. And what we wanna to try to do in Crisis 3 is really come back to the roots of that and have people approach the action sequences the way that they want to approach them. On attend évidemment de voir ce que donnera ce nouveau Crisis, en espérant qu'il ne mise pas uniquement sur son aspect technique, en proposant une expérience narrative unique et des idées intéressantes dans le game system. Réponse le 22 février prochain sur PC, PS3 et 360.